It's my honor and pleasure to welcome Professor Lo Robert Langer, an MIT Institute professor, to this interview. Professor Langer, thank you so much for joining me and welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. So since this interview is mostly aimed towards inspiring young biomedical professional, young scientists or aspiring scientists, I would like to start with, with this question. So what, based on your extensive experience, what do you think will be the most important advice for young colleagues who are aspiring to act towards a successful scientific career? Well, I think it's really what I always recommend is, I mean, and maybe it sounds silly, but dreaming big dreams, dreams that can change the world, doing that as opposed to say what I'll call incremental research or in, or just anything incremental. I, I, I and, and I also feel that if you do that, you know, you're going to run into obstacles. You'll probably run into criticism. And my second piece of advice is don't give up easily. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to say never give up or never change course. But, you know, if you really believe in what you're doing, don't give up easily. Keep trying. Yeah, I mean, definitely. That is super valuable advice, especially from, from a person such as yourself. And, and, and speaking of early career scientists, so kind of younger people, what do you think is the perfect, if I can put it in quotation marks, skill set needed for these people to be successful, if there is even a perfect skill set in your opinion? Yeah, I don't think there really is a perfect skill set other than, than being, you know, well-educated, you know, really understanding the fundamentals of whatever area you go into. And I also think it's important, though, to learn how to present things, to learn how to write good scientific papers, to learn how to give lectures and make good slides, even though that might sound simple. <clears throat> I think it's important to have enough experience speaking and, and things like that. You know, communication skills for anything you do are important. But I think the most important thing is, is just a, a really good education. Yeah, definitely. And <clears throat> speaking of good education, what do you think maybe – uh, that students, you know, in medical school and any other school aged 20, more or less, should do in order to increase their chances of becoming a successful researcher. And apart from maybe only, I'm not, I'm not really putting this in quotations, only learning, should they go to conferences? Should they, you know, give talks to their local community? Do you think that those are important as well? I do. I think going to conferences in particular is useful. And, and I think if you go, like when I have my students go, I always want them to present. You know, I just think the experience of presenting, of meeting people, uh, of learning how to answer questions, I think it's a terrific experience. So the more you present, I mean, the better, you know, in terms of, of, of you know, getting, and you'll get ideas too. You know, you'll meet people and, and collaborate with people that might you might not have done otherwise. Yeah, definitely. And, and, you know, on the other hand, there are, of course, barriers, as, as with any career in scientific careers as well. So what do you think are the most important barriers or main barriers that stand in the way of scientific progress in general? Well, I think that barriers, you know, first, academic barrier, probably the biggest one is raising money, you know, and in companies, if you take an industrial thing, that then it's more complicated. There are different barriers. I think it's it's um, again, if you're in a small company, raising money is going to be important too. You know, large company, you know, it's 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 a big team effort in a lot of cases if you're doing research. So a, a lot of it has to do with you know the interactions of the team and so forth. So I, I think there could be personal things that you you know want to make sure you you're working well with you know your colleagues and 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 that. Uh, you know, and things like that. And then, of course, <clears throat> for either, you know, I think there are personal things, right? You you, you want to have a good, you know, life work balance and, and things like that. Yeah, definitely. And, and you've mentored <clears throat> probably hundreds of, of students and, and even probably more. And, and can you maybe share with us just a kind of a sub question? What, what do you, you know, based on your experience, what are the main challenges that those people actually face? You know, the most common things, the most common challenges they face uh, while they're under uh, mentorship, um, for example? Well, I think, you know, it, it really does vary with the person. I mean, I'd say for undergraduates, sometimes it's, it's, it's trying to do too much, you know, and, and, and I think there you, you want to get a taste, say, of research, but you, you, you still want to make sure you learn the fundamentals and go to classes and things like that. For graduate students, um, I think really that's there. I think you're 
you, you want to learn how to take a research project from start to finish. And I'd say for later graduate students and for postdoctoral fellows, you, you, you know, what I always say is, you know, you're ju- up till that, that time in your life, you're totally judged by how good your answers are to other people's questions. And I think that as you get older and more, you know, to those stages of like late graduate student, you know, postdoc and obviously assistant professor, really what you want to do is learn to ask really important questions. In other words, because in life, I think you're going to be judged much more by your questions than, I mean, because if you give an answer to an unimportant question, nobody's going to care. So you really, and that goes back to my earlier point about asking big questions that can change the world. Yeah, I think I think it's amazing what you, what you just said. It, it's more important to ask the right questions than potentially give the answers is more or less what you're saying. I think it's an amazing kind of piece of advice. And finally, my my last question here is about open access um, science. You know, many academics talk about open access science. There are agreements, disagreements about that. But what do you think in general about the benefits of open access and how open access science can actually benefit early early career researchers? Well, I think open access is is obvious. It's, it, it is a good idea. I mean, clearly, it's, it's a very important idea because it gives everybody in the world the opportunity to see what you do. I mean, that, that, that you know, and, and so I, I, I think it's, you know, I'm, I'm a big supporter of that. On the other hand, you know, you want to make sure the journals that do it are the highest quality. That, that's the other important thing, because fac- getting good faculty positions, in my experience for young people is very, you know, it's determined in, in large part by the how people view the quality of, of the journals. Yeah. So, so th- my last here sub question is it's a very interesting one. I've asked a few people this question, and that is, do you think it's more important to publish well in ter- in, in the sense that publish in a high impact, well known journal, Nature, Cell Science, those types of journals, or publish great work but maybe in a lesser known journal? What do you think? I think I think for faculty positions, because mm-hmm. faculty make judgments based on the quality of the journals. So if yeah. you publish, <laughs> if you, if you, so high impact journals do make a big difference uh, in terms of how the hiring, you know, and, and it makes a big difference, I think, even in getting grants. It's not the only thing, I mean, but, but I think, um, you know, if your papers are widely cited and they're in journals that are, are, are viewed by rigorous as by, by a faculty, you know, that, that does make a difference in terms of how decisions are made. Yeah, definitely. Professor Langer, thank you so much for joining me in this interview. It's been a huge pleasure. Well, pleasure's mine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.